Greetings my fellow monkeys here on the Electric Monkey Brain channel. Today I want to demonstrate something which I find quite strange about the Tesla coil or any high voltage device and that is its ability to be able to pick up a static charge. The reason this is strange to me is the polarity of this static charge. So in order to understand what's happening first we need to look at our circuit diagram. Okay so here's the circuit I'm going to be using today. It's an auto tuning circuit. I showed this and explained it previously in a previous video which I'll link above. Now in the household, when you have normal household electrical appliances, sometimes they can build up a static charge, but they usually have an earth connection which allows a static charge to drain away. So in order to measure a static charge on our Tesla coil and circuit, we need to isolate it from the earth. And because of that, we're going to run from this 24 volt battery because power supplies usually have a connection to the earth or a limited isolation from the earth, so we're going to use a battery. And then in order to measure a static buildup, if any, we're going to make an addition to our circuit here, which is a capacitor and a, a resistor. The capacitor is there to block any DC current, and the resistor there is to allow any static buildup to drain slowly through the resistor. So if there is a static on, on the circuit, that will produce a current to the earth which will pass through the one mega ohm resistor and produce a voltage drop across this resistor. And then we can measure this voltage drop directly with our scope. The capacitor there is there to hopefully uh, allow through some of the high frequency currents, but it won't. I don't think it will short all of the high frequency currents. So really what I'm expecting to see on this resistor is an AC current with a DC offset, and the DC offset should be directly proportional to any static buildup on the circuit. So let's put that together on the bench and take a look at it. Okay, so here's our circuit connected up. This is the one mega ohm resistor across which we're going to try to measure the static voltage buildup. And the orange wire here is a connection to the earth, and the earth goes around the back there. But of course the probe itself is also connected to the earth. Uh, the circuit is running from this battery here. I have two 12 volt batteries connected in series and uh, I make the connection with this negative uh, wire here. Uh, here's the Tesla coil and that's the monkey. Well, I should probably remove the monkey and uh, of course I have to say that no monkeys were harmed during the filming of this video. Okay, so this is our uh, scope. Uh, we have the red probe here which is connected to our one mega ohm resistor and that's going to be looking at the static voltage if any and the yellow um, trace is just the yellow probe which is acting as an antenna and should pick up the oscillation from the Tesla core. I have my uh, screwdriver which is connected via a wire to the earth and I'm going to use it to draw sparks from the tin can okay uh, so I'm going to switch on okay so the yellow that's our Tesla coil in operation and you can see that we have an AC voltage on the one mega ohm resistor which is to the earth okay the red trace is, is the current going to the earth so there is, there's, there's just zero DC on here at all it looks pretty much AC so at this point the Tesla coil is not speak, picking up any static charge so, but now I'm going to draw a spark and then we're going to see what happens. Okay, the, uh, we, we had a huge positive voltage and it drained off to the earth. So I'm going to increase the voltage so we can see that again. Now we're on 20 volts per division. Now it's going negative, mostly. I'll put it back up to 10 volts per division. I'm drawing a spark. Oh, that went positive. Drawing the sparks here. Yeah, it's sometimes it goes positive and sometimes it goes negative. So now it's measuring a positive DC voltage there. See that? I'll bring it down. Hopefully it goes positive again and not negative. Yep. That is a positive static charge, which is coming from the air because of the sparks and is making its way 
through the Tesla coil and through the one mega ohm resistor to the earth. I can see from making this spark that the nature of the spark changes whether it's positive, whether the DC voltage is positive or negative. That's quite strange. See, some, for some reason, when the spark goes quiet, the, it's like that. The voltage goes high and positive, like that. That's hundreds and hundreds, that's about 200 volts we got there. See that? That's uh, one, two, that's about 250 volts. Yeah, this is strange, I don't know why. Most of the time it's going positive, there it's negative, positive. See, a little bit negative, positive again, positive. That's 100, 100 300 volts of static. Three, three hundred, even more there. Okay, let's turn up the voltage uh, per division. That's two hundred volts. Now it's gone negative. That's positive two hundred volts. Two hundred. It's it keeps changing because it's difficult for me to maintain the same position with this. Uh, spark screwdriver which I'm using as a spark collector here connected to the earth lead. Uh, it's difficult for me to, I'll just disconnect, it's difficult for me to keep the same distance and the same type of spark. Uh, the voltage, the static voltage which it's picking up is clearly going positive and negative. I don't know why. I'm going to have to do further educate, uh, investigation to work this out. Okay, so I took some more footage of me drawing a spark from the tin can here and I just want to make a few points here. The first point to make is that uh, you can see that the sparks always emanate from the screwdriver. This is simply because the screwdriver has a much sharper radius of curvature on the end than the tin can does. And the second point I want to make is that there are three different types of uh, spark which you can see. The first type of spark is a sort of a flame-like um, spark. It's a single flame and it's quite purple and the body of the flame is very very thin and it sort of disappears halfway between the screwdriver and the tin can. Uh, this type of uh, spark was the spark which was causing the greatest positive static voltage buildup on the Tesla coil itself and that resulted in about 300 or 400 volts of static on the um, capacitor which we were measuring. The second type of uh, spark which you can see is one where there are several small flame protrusions which come from the screwdriver. Uh, this was, uh, and those flame protrusions are also purple but also disappear shortly after the screwdriver and they um, had a sort of a crackling sound. They also produced a positive static voltage build up on the uh, Tesla coil, but it wasn't as high. It was only uh, the max there was 100 volts or so, and that wasn't very stable. Finally, the third type of spark, which you can see, is a much thicker type of spark, and it travels all the way from the screwdriver to the tin can. It doesn't disappear halfway into the air. It's much more noisy and it's more white. This uh, type of spark was responsible for the negative static charge to build up. Okay, so what just happened? What did we just see? What we saw was that the voltage on the capacitor, i.e. the static voltage which built up on this Tesla coil, uh, was most of the time it was positive and it reached up to 300 volts. Of course, everything, it only builds that static voltage when I draw a spark. That's quite important. Sometimes the static voltage which I picked up was negative. Now to try and explain these phenomena, I have to try to draw a uh, diagram. Okay, so here's my diagram of a tin can, Tesla coil, a driving circuitry and capacitor and resistor connected to the earth. Here's my artist's rendition of a screwdriver connected to the earth. And between these two, of course, is, is the air here. And over here I've drawn some air molecules represented by both positive and negatively charged 
charges inside. And of course, when we apply an electric field to these molecules, they'll become polarized, which I've drawn here, which means the, uh, the negative charge is pulled one way and the positive charge is pulled the other way. Now, if we further increase the strength of the electric field, eventually these molecules will be pulled apart and the uh, negative charges and the positive charges will be free to move in whichever direction they want. Now, usually the positive charges are much bigger than the, than the negative charges, so we can just forget about the positive charges and only think about the electrons. Now, in this case, this is called dielectric breakdown. And uh, in this case, a plasma forms in the air and the air becomes conducting. This is, by the way, what's happening in, in, in lightning strikes. So when we have a spark, uh, there is a plasma formed between our tin can and our screwdriver, which is full of tiny electrons uh, moving and which are free to move. Now the point or question of this is in which direction are these electrons moving? Because if the electrons are moving away from the tin can, then our Tesla coil will become positively charged and will measure a positive voltage across the capacitor. But if the electrons are moving into the uh, Tesla coil, then we'll, it will build up a negative charge and we'll measure a negative voltage on here. Now, what we expect to see, or what I expect to see, is actually nothing. I actually expect to see uh, the Tesla coil not build up static, but be neutral. And that is because the voltage on the uh, tin can is oscillating with this sine wave, and it's both ne uh, positive and negative roughly half the time. So I would just expect the electrons to be moving backwards and forwards. But that's not what we see. What we saw was that most of the time there is a positive voltage building up on this capacitor. Uh, which build, went up to approximately hundreds of volts. But sometimes it was negatively charged but only to a few volts. And to be honest that, that shows a net charge movement of electrons away from the Tesla coil and down to the earth. And to be honest I can't explain that. I think that uh, a, ph a, a plasma physicist might be able to explain why that is occurring. So if you're watching this and you happen to be a plasma physicist, please comment below and explain to us why that's happening. The other thing which I saw which was strange was that the nature of the spark changed depending on the voltage here. When the voltage on the capacitor was big uh, and positive, then the spark looked very, very thin, very purple and very quiet. But when the capacitor here showed a negative voltage, then the spark was thick, white, and loud. And again, I think the plasma physicist will be able to help us here. So, yeah, I'm a little bit confused about this. I have some theories, but I'm not going to show them on the video because uh, they might be wrong. Um, so I'm going to think about this, and I have an idea for another experiment, which I'll have to show in another video. Uh, yeah, I hope you learned something from this from this video. What I learned was that I'm not as clever as I thought I was. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, you can help the channel by using the links below or uh, simply subscribing. So thanks a lot. See you later.